Hello, I'm Rex Childhouse, and I'm a member of the San Diego Fine Woodworkers Association uh, here in San Diego, Southern California. And uh, as a member of the association, I've uh, presented several workshops to their members on uh, the uh, 3D printing capabilities that they have in their uh, member workshop, which is a really cool uh, system. And a couple of things have come up uh, trying to increase the effectiveness of the, uh, of the training, of the exposure of the course. And uh, one of them is to have the uh, participants preload press a slicer, which is a free download. Um, trying to keep the course rolling and keep the material flowing and whatever else and trying to download and install and update uh, kind of drives the course out. So I decided to make a YouTube video and uh, it's available to anybody who wants it uh, on downloading and installing and setting up uh, your computer and Pressa slicer to print primarily on the Pressa i3 Mark III uh, printer, which is the printer I have in my house and the printer that's in the workshop. So uh, let's get on with it and I'm going to show you in detail uh, how to establish uh, the capabilities of the press of slicer, which is a super program and it's free. Let's, let's move on. To download uh, press a slicer, what you're going to have to do is log into Pressa3D.com, P-R-U-S-A-3D.com, and uh, from that position you're going to select software, and you have three options down here, Windows, Apples, and I think this is Linux, uh, I'm not sure. I'm a Windows guy. I'm going to select Windows, and it's going to take me over and automatically on my system start downloading a file. Uh, and this file is pressa 3 d underscore windows underscore two underscore four underscore zero dot exe. It's an executable file. We're going to install that file. And it's going to take uh, a minute or two to download. I have my files downloading into a specifically addressed uh, created uh, directory. Uh, zero dash download holder uh, followed by a date so I know where mine goes. Uh, chances are if you haven't changed yours, yours goes down to uh, downloads or it might go to your desktop. You need to know where uh, it's going to go. So I'm going to click in and I'm going to hit F5 and to refresh it and this is the file that was downloaded. Uh, press a 3D Windows 2.4 Point zero executable. I'm going to double click it and it's going to ask us uh, some things in uh, Windows Security. Hey, do we want to download this? And the answer is yes we do. Or do we want to set it up? The answer is yes we do. You may not have seen that. Now an option is what language do we want? There's numerous. I want English. I'm going to click that. It's going to ask us what we want now, and this is where you kind of need to get specific. If you have more than one printer, uh, make sure you select all those printers in here. The San Diego Fine Woodworker Shop Printer is a Mark III. Uh, mine is a Mark III S, and it, um, so I'm going to leave those selected. So I'm going to select in, um, install the printer, the uh, slicer, uh, install the utilities, install the test objects for uh, the Mark III and the Mark III S, which is mine. You can scroll down here and see other printer options. I'm going to leave it set as it is, and I'm going to hit Next. And it's going to ask me, do I want a desktop shortcut? And the answer is yes, I do. And I'll show you that in a minute. Is this a custom installation? Evidently, it says yes. So I'm going to click Yes. And now it's going to install it. and. Uh, it's going to install it down into the uh, Windows Users directory by default. So we're going to watch it uh, install and I'm going to pause. It took uh, about a minute, minute and a half to install. Now it says, uh, do I want to open the tutorials? Do I want to go to pressaprinters.org, which is a community hub, a forum? Uh, or do I, and do I want to open the sample mold? Uh, 
models I'm going to say I'm going to leave all those check marked and I'm going to click finished and then it's going to take us over to this uh, it opens up another file explorer and while we're in file explorer uh, I want to give you a recommendation and the recommendation is uh, I've got to move a bar uh, I had to move a bar the recommendation is that you click over to view and in view you make sure that file name extensions is check marked and that just that just allows you to see some more information about your files I'm back to home I'm gonna click in files we have two um, objects in here two directories sample G codes and sample objects if you click into sample G codes uh, for the mark 3 uh, it's going to give you g-code stuff. You can't open these up, but you can transfer them over to an SD card and take them straight to your printer. But whatever size they are, however long they take, and they tell you here's uh, this castle is 13 hours and 55 minutes, this buddy is 2 hours and 14 minutes, but you have no idea how big they are until you print them. If you go over to objects, we can turn around and find these guys. Now, uh, you're going to come up with several different files for the presser um, slicer. Uh, the most commons are the the two most common are going to be STL and uh, 3MF. 3MF is a project, and STL is a file, a single object. I'm going to turn around because I have some defaults set up in my system that I need to change. I'm going to right-click him. I'm going to click on Open with and I'm going to click on press a slicer and it's going to take a minute to open it up so here comes press a slicer and I'm going to downsize the window so that we can see it inside the print screen Okay, well that's our castle and um, that's the object that's going to take uh, 13 plus hours to print. Now, I'll get into how to handle things in Press a Slicer in the next video, uh, but I want to show you some of the defaults that are set up in here and I'm going to start at the top. We're going to look at some of the defaults that were put on um, when press a slicer installed on my system and they may be different on yours so it came to 0.10 millimeter detail I normally don't print at 0.10 millimeter detail um, that's a little bit slower I don't need that so I'm going to change it to 0 0.15 millimeter quality and that's what I normally do on this install uh, it gave me generic PLA uh, just because I normally operate with Amazon Basic PLA, I'm going to select Amazon Basic PLA. In the installation, if you installed more than one printer, say the Mark II and the Mark III, uh, it would be shown here. I only have the one printer installed. The Mark III S Plus is what I use at home, and the Mark III S, I think, is what they have at the San Diego Fine Woodworkers Workshop. So. Uh, coming down to supports, this installation gave us none. You have four options. None, support on build plate only, for support enforcers only, and everywhere. Uh, just as a default, I normally select everywhere. You can play with these and see what your print times change. Infills are an interesting little feature here. These prints are not solid. They have a pattern inside of them to increase their rigidity, but to reduce their weight, uh, the cost of the filament consumed in printing them, and to reduce the time of print. Um, default standard seems to be 15%. I left it at 15. Brim is something that is put around your print to increase its footprint, to increase the hold that the print has on the heat bed so that it doesn't detach during print, which is always a risk. I normally leave it as uh, brim checked and uh, go from there. We're operating with the Castle STL and uh, STL standard transitional language, uh, whatever. So coming down here, we can do some sizes, and I already played with this. Uh, right now I have these unlocked. Uh, you can lock them or you can unlock them. 
and uh, I set them for 175 uh, for the X which is width, uh, Y is front to back, Z is height, uh, and uh, it's unlocked. You can select and work in inches if you want. I work in millimeters. I'm not a millimeter guy, uh, but I found out millimeters works a whole lot better in 3D printing than inches. Same with CNC uh, routing manufacturing. And at this point we're going to come down and we are going to slice these. This is going to turn the uh, print into a bunch of horizontal layers and we've enlarged this from that 13 hour print time to something else. So let's slice it and I'm going to put you on hold while it does. It's completed slicing it and it's given us the slider bar on the right side indicating that there's something underneath here. We're going to slide it down and our print time, remember we enlarged this, uh, we went X to 175%, we went Y and Z to 150%, but we went from a 13 hour print time to one day 12 hours. Um, that's a lot of print time. I've got some long prints that I've done um, and it's just not cool. So we're going to change these guys back and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to make this guy 150 again if I can type. Um, that way they all sync. I'm going to lock their relationship in and then I'm going to make them 100 percent and you notice with the lock they all went back to 100 percent and we are going to slice them again and I'm going to put you on hold while it does that. Okay, it's completed slicing it uh, back to 100% of its normal size and uh, on my printer, my installation, it's going to be 14 hours and one minute. Uh, why did it change from the G-code of 13 hours and something? Uh, probably because I changed that uh, 0 0.10 millimeter uh, to 0 0.15 millimeter and I put brim on it. Now, this is a pretty big print, so let me take brim off and when I select brim off, uh, export G-code disappears and it asks me to slice it again. So 14 hours, one minute, I'm going to slice it again and put you on hold. And we're back. And from 14 hours and one minute, uh, we saved four minutes. 13.57. We're back into the 13 uh, uh, hour range for the print. Uh, as this guy goes. So let's move this whole system off the screen just a little bit and uh, click the bed. If we roll the mouse wheel in, uh, the print gets larger and if we grab the bed with our mouse cursor we can move this guy around and these green things are, are supports and it tells you over on the left hand side what each one of these little color codes means. The green things are supports and we can kind of play with them. Uh, it's kind of fun sometimes. So if we take these guys here, uh, it gives you some options. I'm not going to get into it. I'm going to hit the undo up on the upper right side. Uh, there's an undo and a redo. So um, this, is a, this is a major print and uh, it's a lot of fun. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to bring the edge back in and we are going to export this. Now when you go to export in Press the Slicer it normally exports back to the last file uh, directory that it was saved to. I don't want to save it there. I want to come back to my particular little odd files that I have and I'm going to select uh, 3D printer files down here at the bottom. There we go. I'm going to select, uh, uh, let's see here. So uh, I'm going to pick some directory, um, bookmarks, print directory. Okay, now it's not a print, whatever. Press the slicer is going to come up with a uh, standard default for its directory, for its uh, files, for its G code files and uh, it's going to tell you that the print quality is 0 0.15 millimeters, uh, PLA was set, it's going to a Mark 3S and it's going to take 13 hours and 57 minutes, which is really cool. 
um, you can just simply over write these things and I'm going to insert a date 2022-01-26 and that's how I'm going to save this file and uh, we're done with it now what happens is uh, because we played with this file we can come up to uh, save project as and it's going to take us back to that sample file and uh, I'm I'm just going to leave it there I'm going to save it because I was playing with it earlier I'm going to put a date on it 01-26 and this is going to be C project C and notice that this time here it's saving it as a dot 3 mf file it's saving it as a project so if I open I can open it back up and I can play with it some more and and have those uh, same things okay there's one last feature here and let's close this guy out and uh, and he's gone now here is the Pressa desktop icon so when you click on this guy here press the slicer is going to open up and in the process of opening up it's going to tell you uh, what version it is so um, that's installing the press the slicer open up a file play with a little bit uh, it's a great video game it's free you do not need a press a printer to run this program you do not need to log on. You don't need to buy anything. It's free. It's download. In, in, uh, install it. Play with it all you want. Hope you enjoyed it. Had a lot of fun, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching.